Hi, this is Linda West with Living Live, and I'm excited to bring to you today Sonia Hatter. Now, today we're going to talk about fear, and we're going to talk about influencers, like how you can get yourself in front of those influencers that you want to. Sonia is the perfect person to talk about this because she has done it. So first of all, if you have ever experienced any kind of fear in your life, and you want to learn how to break through those fears, or if you want to get yourself in, in front of influencers, I highly recommend sharing this video with your friends okay so I'm going to introduce um, Sonia she um, you know besides being an amazing mother and a very dead sexy wife you know, <laughs> Sonia is the co-founder of thrive make money matter we're going to talk about that in a little bit okay and she's the director of operations of the Hatter group LLC she's an expert in giftology which I want to find out what the heck that is because I have never heard that term before and she has an unparalleled talent for fostering and maintaining relationships. We're going to talk about the key of that. Like, how does she do that? Okay. And then if you're impressed with the speakers from Thrive, which um, some of the names that have attended or that have spoken at Thrive are, for example, Les Brown, Naveen Jain, Claire Winfield, John Lee Dumas, Jay Abraham, Kevin Harrington, Ann Lee, Ty Lopez, Elena Cardone, Jim Quick, Kevin Harrington. That's just a small sampling of some of the speakers that they've had. But if you are impressed by those speakers, you have Sonia mostly to thank for that. Now, Sonia loves to teach how she gets the attention of influencers that you can't reach and creating a win-win scenario to create true lasting relationships. Now, who's all in for that? Let's hear it. Raise the roof, right? Totally raise the roof for that. Sonia is both a visionary and an operator, and she dreams big, and then she executes, which is totally key to success, is executing, and then creating instant results in five exec consecutive years of growth in the business she owns and operates. Sonia, welcome to the show. I'm so glad to have you here. How are you doing today? Good. I sound so fabulous. I'm pretty sure my husband wrote that bio because I like, I sound like Wonder Woman. <laughs> you are. You are. You've done. You've done such amazing work. And so I wanted to talk about that. Like, first of all, how did you guys get started with Thrive? Let's let's start there. My husband. It was just an idea that he had, and um, he's always wanted to give a message message out to people. He loves the idea of serving others and. He loves business, so he's like, what can I do to bring both of those together? And so Thrive was just an idea, and he did it himself the first year. I was super impressed, and um, mm -hmm. I knew that he needed a little bit of help because he's just he's so good at doing the big picture, and there's a lot of tedious things you have to do in a conference. And as it's gotten bigger and bigger and bigger, um, I just kind of started helping him along. But it was just an idea that he had, and when he has an idea, he makes it happen. That's so cool. Now, how, let's let's talk about that just really quickly. Like having an idea and making it happen, because that's you know having an idea and executing right. And how many times would you say, maybe not times, but percentage wise, how many times have you had an idea executed and then realized that you, you know what, maybe I just need to bag that one. It wasn't a very good idea. And then at what point do you know that that's not a good idea? I think you not ever had any of those. I feel like, um, I've seen my husband many times where he's thought of an idea. He's started it, and he's really good at saying, okay, in a business sense, this is not working, so I need to let it go. Um, mm -hmm. Me, I get too like, emotionally attached, and I just thought, I'm like, no, I can bring it back. I can do it. I can keep going. Yeah. So, uh -oh. um, can you guys hear me? Because I see there's somebody there. Can you hear me? Can you hear Sonia? Okay. Oh, there. I think you're back. Oh, can you hear me? I can now. Yeah, there was just like a little bit of a glitch there. So you were saying how oh. you hold on to it, like you really, you know, stay connected to it. And you're like, I can make it happen. I can make it happen. Yeah, like I'm just an emotional person. So even for example, like a house, you know, he'll see a house and he'll know this is got good bones. We can make this work. Let's rehab it. Let's flip it. Me. I'll see the home and I'm like, oh, I can have my babies here and I can do this and that. Like, it's hard for me to distinguish business and not get emotionally involved in it. And so I feel like as the years have gone by, I'm getting better at it and I can say, okay, this idea I have won't work. I wanted to start like a little studio with making kids look like superheroes. And I was like, okay, the numbers don't work. I have to scrap that. But I want to start a champagne line now and I can see the numbers, it will work. And so, 
that I can keep going with. And once I see, all right, this is actually working out, I'll move forward. And if I see the cost is too much for each bottle for me to send out and whatever, then I'll have to scrap it. Like I just can't get very emotionally attached to these ideas anymore. But Thrive has was just supposed to, to just be a business and now it's turned into this big emotional attachment because we've mm. met so many people and we've grown a community so now I'm like right back to where I was where I'm like okay I'm so emotionally attached to this idea like <laughs> this is this got to work we got to keep going because this is right. actually back together so this, this one I can't give up on <laughs> Well, that's awesome because it's been, you know, it's a great event, helped so many people. Like, um, I know that we were talking earlier about uh, you know, the uh, my mentor, for example. He started a magazine because he was sitting at Thrive and there was, you know, something that was said about having a magazine. He's like, we're starting a magazine. Mm -hmm. And now, yeah, so it's, it's cool to think like how many, you don't even know all the people that you've Im impacted there because not everybody voices it. You know, they just go on with their lives and, so to think like how many people you guys have helped, you know, through this, this is absolutely amazing. Thank you. Yeah, it's definitely been a little ripple effect where we'll hear through the grapevine certain people that have turned their businesses into a for purpose business and mm. they've done it all because of Thrive and now they give 10% away of their business to whatever their hearts are aligned with and they did it because of Thrive and I'm just like, Oh my gosh, like the whole message of what he, the vision that he had is he just executed it and it's just flourishing and I love it. That's so cool. So your involvement with, with the event, like let's, let's wrap around the influencers part because I wanted to talk about influencers. So talking about influencers, what was your first, um, like your first step that you took to reach out to an influencer and how did that Feel? Did you have any fears around that? I guess would be like my first question. Not so much fears because it was behind, like I was behind the computer. I didn't have to call and do any of that. It was just an email. So that didn't really scare me. However, I learned some techniques where I, I listened to certain books and Tim Ferriss and, you know, to, to contact an influencer, they're very busy. A CEO doesn't have time. They're being pulled this way and that way. They don't want to read these long emails where I'm right. explaining Thrive. I'm like, this is Thrive. This is what we do. We help others. We raise money and blah, 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 blah. They just didn't have the time to read that whole email. And as I just made them, I mean, they're just sentences now, just a couple sentences. And then I can basically just get in that way they'll see it I'll just say hey do you like to speak on stage and all of a sudden I get a response well that was so much easier it's just they don't have time so I just make my statements brief and if they choose to come with us then it just works perfectly and I've noticed that Instagram has been my best way to communicate with all the influencers I've tried Facebook I've tried emails I've tried looking at so many different aspects on how to contact this person but just Instagram, a lot of influencers actually check that. They don't check all the other, like the emails or other messages. So if it's just a quick thing where it says, hey, would you like to speak on our stage? We have a, con a three day conference. Where can mm -hmm. I send more info to? It's, it's huge. And also I can talk to people so much easier because I have a three day conference. So I can mm. use that I'm, because an influencer wants to get their message out there or they want to sell a product or they want more people to see them and like them. So I, I have a stage for that. So the platform I have is giving to them as well. So I, it's not just a take, take relationship. I'm giving mm. value to the influencer. And so they in return give value to me by speaking on my stage. And I have a friend named Mark Lack that told me it just, it stuck with me where he said it's, a relationship like that is kind of like a bank account. You can't keep withdrawing and never put a deposit in. And mm -hmm. so you have to make sure that you give value to the other person. Like Gary V says, you know, 5149, make sure that you're giving 51% that you're giving them a reason why. And you, like, and you don't want to align yourself with an influencer that you don't connect with. You have to have the same morals and values and basically look up to them. And then that's why you want to contact them and you don't want it to just seem like an agenda while you're friends with them. You have to uh, like genuinely want to be friends. And then you like the mm -hmm. relationship will just form. And I've had I um, 
Steve Sims is an incredible person. I, do you know, yes. Steve? You know Steve? Yeah. yeah. Um, he actually has a business where he connects you with influencers. So there's, you can do it on your own. And then there's people that actually do this and he's connected people. He had a client that wanted to go meet journey and he got them on the stage, but he also aligned their values and they created this whole event where um, they were giving back for autism, I believe it was. So it wasn't mm -hmm. take, take, take. And Steve Sims has created a whole business out of it. And I, it, I think that's awesome. Yeah, he's just an incredible guy. You know, Steve is, and well, you guys are too. I love what you're doing. But let me ask you, do you do a lot of research before you reach out to an influencer? Or, or what is your process of that is deciding whether the person is in alignment, first of all, with your morals of the people that you want to come speak at Thrive? Yes, I told. Uh, yeah, it sounds really strange, but yes, we I do so much research on the person, especially if I want them on our stage, because I need to make sure that their values are aligned with us. And it goes back to what you brought up. You said you wanted to understand what giftology was, and yeah, I was yeah. by a man named John, and it's called giftology. And you actually see what the person likes, and you give them a gift, and it shows that you listen to who they are. For example, we just got um, a gift sent to us and I just told the man, thank you, his name's Lee. He sent my husband and I skateboards and it says thrive on the bottom. And so he's actually, that, that shows me that he's followed my Instagram, sees that I'm skateboarding with my husband and he made us a skateboard and it has a thrive logo. I'm like, <clears throat> I was literally blown away. That gift yeah. began out in my mind and now Lee has made an impression on me. And when I see him next at Thrive, I'll want to continue that relationship with him because he gave me value. Not that, I mean, it's a skateboard. I can have someone just write me a note and it means the world to me. Um, but giftology is very, oh, <laughs> this is it right here. Oh, cool. <laughs> it just flew out of the sky. That's amazing. Like, it is just extremely thoughtful. And to have someone give you a gift like that, it just shows that you care. So when I do have a relationship with somebody. Um, my love language is giving gifts and I love mm. to see what the other person likes and give them something that stands out. For example, I went to, um, you know, Grant Cardone and Elena Cardone. Yeah. Um, yeah. It was Elena's birthday. It was a very intimate birthday party. I think there was like 30 of us. And I was like, what should I get her? And I was like, she likes Chanel. She likes this. She likes that. I could go get her some earrings or some shoes. But I was like, that doesn't stand out. And I care about her and I care about our friendship. I don't want to just have it be a shallow relationship. So I was like, what does she like? She loves guns. And so she loves to go shooting. And so I got her this little optical or scope. I don't even know what it's called, but you stick it on your gun and it's a really nice one and it can help her shoot better and all this stuff. And it was just priceless when you could see on the birthday table, all these Chanel bags because everyone knows she likes Chanel, and then my bag stood out, and she could see it was like a tactical item for guns, and she just like ripped it open, and she was so grateful, <laughs> and it just shows that I listen, and I know who she is, and so I think gifts are huge in that space of influencers. I've had where we've done podcasts, we've done stuff, and someone just sends us a gift basket and saying, thank you so much for doing this, or we had a speaker on stage, and he sent us a Cutco knife that said Thrive. It's those people are giving to us and then we want to give even more in return. Right. And I love that. It's, it's interesting you mentioned that because just the other day I was talking to a potential client and something came about her dream, like one of her dreams that she wants for her future. And I ended up sending her the thing that she was dreaming about. You know, and it was very simple. It took me a couple minutes. Right. You know, it cost you a, a few bucks or whatever. And I just sent it to her. She'll get it tomorrow. I'm so excited to see her see it because she doesn't know it's coming. You know, right. so it's that. I think that's yeah. exciting. So, like, you're, maybe one of your love languages also is gifting people. Like, mm -hmm. I think it's, I, I mean, I got a salt and pepper shaker and from some friends. And I'm, I'm a, like, they saw it on my snap at a restaurant that I really wanted it. And they went back to the restaurant, bought it and brought it to my house. Like, wow, it's an incredible, thoughtful relationship. And so I want to do that with everyone else. And I'm not going to align myself with influencers that I don't want to be friends with. 
And I want to be able to give them a salt and pepper shaker and they're just blown away because it means the world to them because I'm a good person and they're a good person and we're going to do business together or whatever it is. It's, I, I love giving gifts. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, we have a, a couple like a uh, Cole Carissa's man that Sonia Hatter is beautiful. <laughs> Hi Cole. Good to see hey, you. Don't you have, don't you have a podcast to be on? <laughs> <laughs> Get your schedule right, Cole. <laughs> and then um, Deuce is sitting in traffic with no signal. He'll watch the replay later. It's awesome. Um, he, so he stands out to me as well. He's been trying to contact me and Cole, and we're just so busy. But, like, I've noticed him, and so is my husband, because he keeps trying to do thoughtful, nice things. So he's trying to connect with influencers and mm -hmm. he's doing it in a genuine way. And so I appreciate that. He's busy he's in traffic right now but he's watching this like there's little things that you can do where people appreciate it and right not just an agenda for them to get something yeah so if, if anybody's interested or anybody thinks I'm an influencer I'll give you my address I'm just kidding <laughs> <laughs> but that's quite cool. I like that um, it's interesting because for me I've never been like I've never been big on gifts. I'm not like, that's not my love language. My love language is, I don't know what they categorize it as, but it's like appreciation. I just want to feel appreciated. Mm -hmm. You know, that's, that's my thing. So because I'm not a person who, uh, like gifts is gift giving or gift receiving isn't my thing. Gift giving has been a, a thing I've had to be consciously aware of. Mm -hmm. So it's not that I'm not into it. It's just, I have to be conscious that, Oh, that's right. Other people want gifts. <laughs> so, so being aware of it, and so you really bring a very big, um, you know, you know, bring some light to that of how how my gift to this one person like that was. It really took effort for me to do that because it's not my thing. But I had to say, you know what? I really want to send her this because I want to grant her this dream she has, and and just just give it to her. Why not? It was easy for me to do. Love it. Yeah, exactly. And she'll treasure it. Like it's something that she will use every day. And she'll, I didn't put any, I didn't put my logo. I didn't do any of that. It's just a, a little thing I did, you know, a little saying and stuff. And she'll see that saying and remember me each time. And it's just, it was so fun to do because I, I do love giving. And so you're right. You know, I do. I absolutely love giving. So that's awesome. So now you, you have their attention. You've sent them the message on Instagram, you know, just a short, very, very short message. And they responded and they said, yes. <laughs> and you're like, Woohoo party, right? Yeah. <laughs> and then you're like telling everybody, I did, I did. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we got him, we got him, you know? And so so then what's the next step after that? You usually, um, are, would you say like most influencers, you're then in communication with their staff? Are you in communication with them? Or or what is it 50-50? What's the, the odds on that? It depends. So like Ariana Huffington, I have been trying to contact her for years now and she finally wrote me back on Instagram mm -hmm. and um, she asked me to email her and I kept emailing her email and she wasn't responding. And I mean, that woman is busy. She's all over. She's okay. just boss lady of everything. And um, yeah. she actually it had so much time had gone by and I kept on emailing saying, just you know, in a sense, I was kind of annoying, but I also know that she'd appreciate the hustle, you know, like I'm all mm -hmm. there. I want to talk to you. And so I wanted her to see that. And then her assistant, he wrote me. And so now I'm talking to him. Um, so most of the time, I'd say you go to basically the gatekeeper, you know, someone that's handling their schedule and doing all that. But I also think that it depends how big they are. So she is, mm. she, she's doing everything and anything and I probably only talk to her assistant but then there's also people that are very hands-on some influencers and they don't want to outsource that if they choose to speak to you then they they're going to talk to you and I just email with them like Seth Godin mm. what an incredible man he and I email back and forth I've never talked to an assistant I talk to him and so he's very particular in who he speaks to he just won't respond or he'll talk and carry on a conversation with you. And so I think it just matters who they are. And you'll either, I can't say if it was 50, 50 or either with a sustain or that. I just, it, it just all depends on the person. Okay. And you touched on something that is very, very important there. Cause you said, you know, I've been trying to, I'm getting contact with Ariana Huffington for years mm -hmm. and your persistence is what has paid off. And a lot of times people will send one message and think that that's it. Yeah. But 
when you have a goal, a dream, a desire, a passion or whatever it is, like you have to be persistent. I love to you know, talk about, for example, when you're a little kid and say you're at Disneyland and you see Mickey Mouse over there and you want to go talk to Mickey Mouse, but there's all these adults in the way, right? What do you do? You run into all those adults. And you're like, get out of my way, get out of my way. I want to go see Mickey Mouse. So what happens in our life that, you know, at what point in our lives do we allow our Mickey Mouse moment to disappear and and just say, oh, I'm going to give up because they don't want it. You know, like at what point do we do that? But you, you your persistence is what's what, one thing that really is going to, you know, propel you to that next level and that next level. And there's always more levels. Right? There's never the levels never end. Right. Mm -hmm. As you, well, you uh, you guys had Naveen Jain. I mean, now that guy is like blows your mind. But the, like for even for him, someone like him, the levels never end. You just keep going and putting yourself out there. Yeah, I I think that you can't you can't teach that. I think you either have it or you don't. So I can see my my oldest daughter. Her mindset is extraordinary. She will throw a fit for three hours for the same thing. Like if she wants something, she wants it, and so. It's kind of a bad thing, but at least I know as she gets older, when she decides she's going to do something, she's going to do it. And I, I have that. My husband has that. And so I, I did that bikini competition. You know, I was told there's no way you can do this in three months. You're not going to be able to do it. I'm like, I'm going to do it. Like, there's no turning back. I didn't have a sip of alcohol. I didn't have any, like, I stuck to exactly what I needed to do because that's my mindset. And when I'm, I've decided to do something, then I'm going to do it. And so my husband always laughs because when he's all, when Sonia's mad at me, she's mad at me. Like there's, there's <laughs> no way I'm getting out of it. And it's just, I, I think that that's also helped me be so successful in life is just mm -hmm. knowing when I'm ready to do it, I'm going to go all the way. And if I fail, that sucks. But like, at least I know that I did it and I move on. And, and that's a, a good point because, um, like there might be something, maybe there's something you need, um, not you, but you know, like anybody listening is that there's something that you need or want and maybe you're going about it the wrong way and that's why you're not persistent. Maybe you need to do is, like change it up, try something different, or maybe bring somebody in like Sonia, you know, <laughs> who's very persistent, like bring that person in that can help you get to what you want. Don't just give up. Yeah. Keep going after it. If it's part of your dream, we get one chance at this life. You get one chance. And, you know, this is the th for me is like when I'm on my deathbed, I don't want to be saying, I wish I had. I wish I had. I want to say, I'm so glad I did. I'm so glad I did. And that's what you know? when Stephen asked me for the magazine article. He said, what is your biggest regret? And, and you know, you always want to say, oh, I have no regrets. I learned from all of it. But like I have one and, and it's just that I didn't like I didn't dream enough. I just didn't think that I could accomplish certain things and mm -hmm. realize my mindset. And when I do want to do it, I'm going to go for it. So I just wish that I started doing everything that I'm doing now sooner because I could have done it and who knows where I'd be now, but I'm grateful that I'm doing it now. But I just, now I've right. had dreams of starting my own champagne line, having dreams that we're going to have 1500 people at Thrive this year. And that mm -hmm. one day we're going to have Dwayne Johnson on the stage, you know, I, oh yeah. You know, I have these goals now, which before I would never, I would like, I'm not going to even attempt doing that because I'll fail. Now I'm just, now I'm going for it. I love it. I love it. So they can attend Thrive by, by going to attendthrive.com. Yes. <laughs> Are there any speakers that you can announce yet or not yet for it's, a, the dates are September 14th, 15th, 16th, 14, 15, 16 in Las Vegas. Mm -hmm. It's going to be at the Hard Rock and, okay. um, Richard Branson just actually bought the hotel, which is amazing because I've been trying to get him for years to speak there. So oh my gosh, I might get him, but um, that, that that's definitely a big goal. So we'll go from there. But um, no, we're not. We're getting the site ready to launch tickets. So hopefully it'll be done this month, and then people can go purchase tickets and see some of the speakers, and then we add more speakers until um, September. So people, it's just it's a little like mystery. Every time they get on, there's someone new. Okay, now if they want to get on your list, since the website's not launched yet, if they want to get on your list to be notified when it's launched, how do they do that? Um, they can go to Victoria at ColeHatter.com and message okay. Victoria, and then we will send them a message and let them know when to uh, go to the site. I'm going to put, put that in the comments here really quick. 
Okay, so Victoria at ColeHatter.com. I put that in the comments, you guys. So go ahead and you know click there and um, comment and con contact Victoria to get on that list because it's an absolutely amazing event. It has changed so many people's lives. And if you have, you know, a, there's Victoria right there. Hey, Victoria. <laughs> If you have, you know, dreams, which I hope you do, if you have passion, which I hope you do, if you have desire, which I hope you do, and you're not achieving your dreams, your passion, your desire, I highly recommend attending the Thrive event because this is an event where you're going to, you're going to meet up with people. Cole, are you supposed to be on that um, podcast right now? <laughs> Um, but he says you can opt in on the site as well. So you can go to attendthrive.com and there is an opt in on the site. So do that. But, you know, you're going to meet amazing people. So it's not only about the speakers, is it right? There's the people in the audience that are attending as well. You're going to meet amazing people in the audience. And so you want to share with us maybe like what is the audience filled with? Like what kind of people are attending the event? There are people that want to grow their business, obviously. That's why they're at a three-day conference, learning, getting all the education that they need from the influencers that they follow. But then there's also the aspect of giving back. So we teach people how to make their business a for-purpose business, like Tom Shoes, where you, know, you, you buy a pair of shoes and then you're giving a pair of shoes away to somebody. Um, so the, the attendees that we have are philanthropists that are brilliant, trying to have their own business. It's just our crowd is one of a kind and we have speakers that have their own events and when they come to ours and they see all these people and they meet with them like man your attendees here are one of a kind they they they're ready to change the world and we're like we did it that is that is that is the mission and if you want to have it, it, i feel like it's hard to find good friendships with people that are like-minded and so mm -hmm. we seen people that you know have gotten married because of Thrive, like they were there. And then we have people that now have wow. long wolf pack relationships. <laughs> they say like they're like <laughs> little group. They're just like their own little world. And so people have become business partners through it. And so I love, I just love seeing the community. We have, I mean, Victoria was a Thrive attendee and now she is at my house with me all the time. She's part of the family. We, it's just, it's Thrive is one of a kind, the people that attend. So I can see why you've um, you gained such an attachment to it, right? An emotional attachment because of all the good that it's doing. And and like for me, I'm a very emotional person too. So like I can almost feel your I can feel your emotion when you're talking about it. And it actually gives me a little bit emotional, which is <laughs> kind of weird because <laughs> I'm an emotional soul, you know. Whatever, I'm a little care bear. I call myself a care bear. I love it. So so really quick before we head out, um, let's talk about. Because this is one of the topics that you and I both uh, share a lot about. You know, I wrote the book, the, the Year of Fears, you know, when I encountered fear every single day. I'm going to be doing a freaking bikini contest. I'm terrified, but I'm doing it because I'm scared. And, you know, I just love the topic of fear. So are there any fears that you have right now that maybe you are going to be facing or any fears recently that you face? And how did you make yourself go through that fear? Um. A big fear that I have is doing podcasts, um, speaking in front of people, and I've just decided, you know, I'm going to just keep doing it until I'm basically desensitized to it, and I can just do them all the time. I, I, I have a bigger fear of not doing a good job, rather, it's just mm. like, do it. I don't know why I think I won't do well, and so when I keep telling myself over and over that I'm not going to do well, I won't do well. So now I go into it as, with a different mindset, thinking I'm gonna crush this. I'm gonna like, why wouldn't I do it? It's only gonna help me grow. And so I've built up this confidence with that bikini contest, which is still, right. but it really helped me grow in so many different levels, physically and mentally. And so now I'm just trying to, when I see something that scares me, to do it, just like you, how you said your book, you did it. Every, you did something every single day. And once you do it, it's not so scary anymore. So I'm I'm trying to do more of those things and just keep growing. Well, it looks like you're actually doing more of those things. Like you're you're here right now. It's not a podcast, but you know it's a live video interview. So it Which kind of fits under this. Scarier because there's people listening right now. At least a podcast. Right. 
<laughs> that's true. That's true. There's no do over. There is no um, cutting out stuff that we like. Uh, let's take that part out. There is none of that. Right. <laughs> well, what I you know, what I love about it is that. Um, so first of all, you're doing it, which is awesome because you you are doing it because you're scared and it is going to make, you know, make, make you more confident and stronger and all that. But here's the side effect of it is that you're also impacting other people's lives and you're encouraging them to also face their fears. And that's for me, that's like the best charge is I say, you know what, I'm going to do it because I'm scared. And when I do that, every time I do that, somebody else is like, I'm going to do it too, because I'm scared. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, wow, just like the, the ability to wow. help somebody else through their fears. Mm -hmm. Like for me there, cause fear held me back for so many years. Like I was 51 before I did the year of fears and you know, it's like, it just totally changed my life. Now I could say, I wish I had done it earlier, which, you know, it's okay. I just had a lot more fears to go through. <laughs> By the time I was 51, boy, I just stacked them all up. I had a whole huge suitcase of fears. <laughs> you got to write your book because of it. Yes, exactly. See, so all good, you know, all good things come out of fear. <laughs> <laughs> well, is there anything you want to share with our audience? You know, before we head out, um, I know we, we want them to attend Thrive. That's again, attendthrive.com opt in there so they'll notify you when the site is launched for you to purchase tickets. But is there anything else you want to share with the audience? Um, just kind of what you said that you did your fears and I'm doing mine, but it all is for a greater purpose. It's for your why it's. And when I say your why, it could be your kids. It could be to impact others. It could be so many different things. You have to figure out what that is and then just keep going with it. And um, yeah. I having so many people message me online after I did my fear talk or after I did my bikini competition saying, you did this. Now I'm going to do it. And you've helped me. And that's the only reason I'm like, OK, if, if this is helping this person, then I'm going to keep going. And then when I saw my daughter holding my trophy and she's like, mommy, I'm so proud of you. I'm, I, I have to keep doing this kind of stuff because. Not only is it helping me grow, it's impacting others. And my why here on this earth is I want to help other people. And so if I'm going to do it by doing things like this, I got to keep going. Yeah. Oh, I love it. So holding your trophy and you have to have your child say, I'm so proud of you. Oh, it was. Just, I bet you melted, right? Oh gosh, it's going to make me cry just thinking about it. She was so <laughs> proud of me. And my husband, he, like he cried. He was like, I'm so proud of oh. you. Oh, I just have the best support team in the world. Well, I'm crying right now because <laughs> I totally like I can see myself up there. I'm going to have your daughter come watch me so she can tell me she's proud of because she's how old is she? Five. Five. Oh, perfect. Yeah. I'm going to bring her along to tell me how proud of me she is. <laughs> she will so, well, thank proud of everybody. Yeah. Mine are 33 and 34. So they're like, and they're probably so proud of you. They have to make, you have to make sure they see all this. If I knew my mom was stepping out doing all this, I'm like, mom, I'm so proud of you. Okay, I will share. I haven't shared it with them. So Oh my goodness, that'll be probably the best part. That'll be your why. Oh my gosh. You know what? And it's it's crazy because why haven't I shared it with them? It's probably because I'm scared. Oh my goodness. So, Hang up with me and go do that right now. I will do that. I, my my daughter lives next door to us, so I'm oh, gonna easy. Just, yeah. Grab the wine and go head over there and tell her. I'm gonna ask her to come and and uh and tell me how proud she is that day. So, well, so awesome. You know, thank you so much for being here. I can't wait till, you know, Thrive event. Again, it's attendthrive.com. You guys check it out. Sonia, thank you so much for your time. I know that you are also a very busy woman and I really appreciate all you do to help others because I know that that is your purpose here on earth. And so thank you for being you and I just really love you. You're amazing and go change the freaking world. <laughs> hey, you help me do it by doing one of these. So thank you. I will. Awesome. Yay. <laughs> So have a great day, everybody. Again, remember, please share this out with anybody you know who is looking to reach influencers or anybody who's going through any kind of fears. This is information that they can use to help them you know, better their lives. So have a great day. This is Linda West with Living Live and Sonia Hatter with Thrive. Bye-bye now. Bye, Linda.